Hey, this message is for the YouTube reviewers who are no doubt going to be reviewing this video um, as I'm sure it will be flagged for demonetization. I do not show anything about installation of these. The following video is mostly just a discussion about the pitfalls that you run into um, on installing rear sights. Um, my intention is to follow your rules and uh, this is me doing my best. Hello boys and girls, Eagle Run 23 here. Welcome to the channel. Okay, so today we're working on, this is what the workbench looks like when I don't clean it off to make a video, by the way, you're welcome. Okay, so today we're working on a rear sight for a Glock. Now, most of the rear sights that I have gotten were already installed and they took uh, no effort, which has been the case, you know, for most of the ones that I've built. But for our Glock 26 here, we got a slide. This is an agent slide um, from P80 Builder, and I have to install the sights. I thought, cool, can't be too hard. And I looked into this because I wanted to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. And there is so much conflicting information. It is insane. Do you push it out from the right to the left? Let's see if you can see that dovetail. See? See how it is dovetailed. It really is a dovetail, but what I don't know is... Uh, let's see if I can get that lined up for you. There you go. Is it truly tapered? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's really hard to tell. So let's make sure we're zeroed. And let's just kind of do a preliminary check here. I'm showing uh, 574 on that side, and I'm showing 587 on this side. So this is, uh, the muzzle is this direction, so the right and the left here. This is showing me that the left is larger. Let's make sure. Five, eighty-five, five eighty-four, and let's check this side. Man, it, it's re it, honestly it's even hard to measure. I'm gonna. I know this is a bad angle for you, but let's do this part again here. I feel like that was the best measurement I got. Five, five, seven. Five, five, six. Man, it's just, it's really hard to tell. And then we can check um, down here as well. Okay, so I'm down inside that dovetail and I'm showing a five, eight, seven. And let's get down inside this dovetail here. Five, eight, seven. Wow. So I can say this isn't, this is not tapered. Is it? Is it worth trying to get down inside here and see? I feel like this, see how these are offset. So I feel like I can't really even get a good measurement, but I'll show you. Right there on the end, 599. And right here on this end, 599. It's really hard to get it in there. There we go, five, nine, seven. And again, that's not the best way to measure. Um, so, does a factory Glock have a taper? I don't know. Does this P80? I don't know, but let me tell you what I do know because I've looked into this. So, since I'm not a Glock guy, all this Glock stuff that I'm doing here is all aftermarket stuff. I've got 
P80 Builder, Zafari Precision. Um, I don't even remember what some of the other slides I have are. I have a, a PSA, Palmetto State Armory slide. Thankfully, all those have the sites installed. So this is really the only one that I've had to deal with. And the other thing here is I can tell you that I can put this in right there. And I measured that versus that. And they measure out to be the same. So here's what I do know. I called and talked to my buddy. He's on YouTube. He has a channel. He'd love it if you subscribe. Echoes Reloading Chamber. E-C-H-O. Echoes Reloading Chamber. He is a certified Glock armorer. He went to Glock school. He is, I'm going to call him my source of authority here. So I sent him a message and he called me. And he was like, there's a ton of misinformation on this. And here is what he learned at Glock school. So the word from the Glock school is, so we're looking, This our barrel's pointed in this direction. We are looking um, at the gun. This is the left, this is the right. We're not twisting anything here. The, the bullets eject this way. And I think one of the best way to remember how to do this is that you're... Um, your sight should go in this way and out this way. So everything happens on the right. Now, there's probably going to be some of you in the comments who are going to say I'm wrong, but this is the authority that I have this information from. And I definitely uh, think this is the way to go. So we are going to install our sights in this way. And if I were to ever remove any of the sights from my, from my uh, Glock clones here, I'm going to push it out that way. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I recommend you do. Um, that is what the Glock armorer told me to do. And so I think that's, that's what it is. So unfortunately, I cannot show you how to install these on YouTube, which is fine because you probably don't want to see me fumble around with this anyway. But I'll tell you this. This dude right here on Amazon is 35 bucks, 25, 30 bucks. This is a piece of junk. Do not use this. <laughs> um, First of all, it's universal, which makes it incredibly fidgety to get it in there. If you want to spend 150 bucks or 100 bucks, there is one that is made that actually clamps on to the bottom of your Glock slide. If you really got to have the tool, get the tool. Now, here's the next tool, front sight. Um, in here, can you see down in there? Right down in there, there is a little hex. And I believe it's 5 16 I looked through my sockets and I, I, I did find a socket that fits. Um, and I saw a little tutorial where you put that thing on a, on a bench grinder and you, you thin it and thin the walls down. Cause the problem is, is there's just not enough clearance in there to get a real socket down in there. And so you pretty much have to have a Glock sight tool. And thankfully they haven't fooled with this too much and it's fairly universal. So, um, all the aftermarket stuff I've been messing with would be the same as Glock. Now this is like eight or nine dollars, got it on Amazon. You can see it has a little magnet down in there. Now this worked great. The only thing I'll say about it is the depth here is a little deep. You can see it, it's, magne it's magneting my, um, my tweezers here. But this depth is just a little too great. I almost, if I were doing this a lot, well, if I was doing this a lot, I would buy a, a, a better tool. But for our purposes here, um, you almost could like just say, if you could, if you had a way to, to remove material here and make this flat, you could almost take half of this distance out and, and cut it down a little bit. I'm not gonna do that. It worked fine for me. I did have a little bit of trouble with the thread engaging, but I was able to fidget it and got it. And it, it's tightened down, use the Loctite. We're good to go on the front, no big deal. Uh, I'm gonna keep this because you just never know. And for eight bucks, it's probably worth having. There is a 30 or $40 version of this that appears to be perfect and it has a really shallow, would that be like a throat? I don't know what that would be. It has a more shallow um, inside there. Anyway, I'm gonna send this back. And I'm going to install this one um, with a nylon little drift. And um, I have a nylon hammer as well. So I'm not going to show you how I do that, uh, but I think you can figure it out. And we'll see how it works. All right, and we're back. Apologize for the length of this video. But uh, what you don't know is that I filmed that section that you just got done watching about three or four weeks ago. Um, Nothing but trouble 
um, getting this rear sight in. Um, mercy. Okay, so let me just kind of tell you here what happened. We went in correctly, uh, but it got stuck on me and I could not get it out without trying to damage it. We ended up, we do have ourselves a, uh, a little, a little divot there from the punch. The nylon punch, once I got it stuck, <laughs> was not enough to get it out. And I didn't want to put this in a vise. Um, I didn't want to mar anything up that I didn't have to. And so, um, we finally just beat on it and, and I did have to use uh, a steel punch. I cannot find my uh, brass punch. So anyway, we got a little mark there, it's fine. But once we got it out, then we had to fit this thing. Some fitting required. So the, the bottom face of it, uh, I stoned and the uh, inside the dovetail, I had to find, and I do have a nice selection of files and I found a little file and I was actually able to file the dovetail on the actual site. Um, I don't know how much I took off, it seemed like a lot, but I still had to beat this thing in there, but I was able to do it with the little nylon drift, and she's in there, I've measured it. Um, obviously, we haven't shot it yet, but I've measured it, it appears to be great. And the only battle wound here on the slide is, there's a little silver showing right there and on the inside edge. Um, and that is not from, I didn't file on the slide. That little, you can see it right there, a little silver piece. Um, that's where the finish has gone. That is from the slide going in and out. Um, it just, it marred up my slide, which is unfortunate, but um, what are you gonna do? We, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna shoot these. They're not um, going in a museum. Gonna be, this gun's gonna be carried, so that will not be the only scar this thing will have we're, we're going to talk about holsters uh i just hooked up with versa holster and um or versa carry yeah versa carry so a video coming up on that and uh we're going to get this thing to the range uh, but it is ready to shoot um thank you guys for watching and uh we'll see you next time eagle run two three